Players' Championship Finals, night one, and can you say drama? We had some, all kinds of it, in the Adrian Lewis-Josh Payne match. Things got heated and almost came to blows. Would Super Chin begin his quest to retain his title and style, or would it be Luke the Nuke and bombs away on an upset? And who do you like here? Snake Biter, the Jammy Dodger, a literal nail biter, Tungsten Tension, today on High Roller Radio. Yes, Friday night at Butlins, the beer is flowing, the party atmosphere alive and well. It's been a long year on the Pro Tour, and it all comes down to this tournament. It's the evening session, reported DJ Gandolfini. 16 more showdowns for us on two boards. These eight on the main stage, these eight on the secondary outer stage, jam-packed with action with Grand Slam champ Gerwin Price, world champ MVG, and reigning players champ Daryl Gurney all set to tow the Aki. Time to do some telly stuff with Jackie Oatley, tweeted commentator Chris Mason, the beast to her beauty. Referee Hugh Ware, meantime, was reflecting on his duties earlier in the day. Afternoon, amazing, he said, with so many players and officials supporting. Hashtag rainbow laces. Stage two, looking good, by the way. All right, let's start on the main stage. Stage one, Christoph Rutaisky facing Irishman Steve Lennon, who did not have his shamrocks working at all today. No luck in this one. Just couldn't find a double. 16 misses in all, and that won't cut it. The Polish Eagle was making no mistakes on his. This double five made it 4-1 at the commercials. Lennon, no answer. 6-1 your final. Johnny Clayton, a finalist two years ago, taking aim on Ryan Meikle, but his aim was not that good today. Look at this. Are you kidding me? The Barber out in front, 5-zip, on the verge of a big TV win, and yes... This double 10 would make it the whitewash and the shave. Huge upset. The look on Johnny's face says it all. The Welshman stunned. Just as shocked myself, he said. Johnny didn't turn up, but I'll take it. Did not see that coming, tweeted Fact Check UK. The ferret bagled by the barber. Decent performance, that said Max McLaughlin. Clayton poor, though, especially poor considering he was defending a final from two years back. Adam Austin, 71, described it this way. Just the one word, scalped. Still on the outer board. Joe Cullen got the jump on Kyle Anderson and would not relinquish his advantage. Why? Because he had five 180s and a 174 en route to a 4-2 lead. He'd take the next two as well. Smooth sailing moves into the second round by a 6-2 margin. Back on the main stage, Grand Slam champ Gerwin Price was once again in dominating form up against Mickey Mansell and cruising. We know who these fans were cheering for the Welshman. I love Gerwin Price, tweeted Zoe. If I'm honest, well, she must have been loving this. The Iceman with the big reaction at 3-0. Mansell averaging 105 and no dart at double through the first three legs. It was 4-1 at the interval. He then kicked off the sixth leg with a maximum en route to 5-1. As I mentioned, the Clono Cyclone wasn't playing bad. He took the next two to hang in there, gave it some after that double 10. But truth is, Gezi's feeling it. 6-3 your final. He averaged 102 and was 6 of 8 on doubles. Impressive. Aaron Monk in tough against Vincent Vandervoort. The big Dutchman got out quicker. Took out 82 on tops for 3-1. Still had daylight at 4-2. Monk, though, is a fighter. He battled back to level. You can see the intensity. Unfortunately for him, Vincent upped his game from there with darts like these and he faltered. 6-4 the final. VVDV moves on. James Wade and Ted Evitz duking it out on the main stage. Leading 2-1. The machine opened 180-180 and was sitting on the 9. 
but he lost the leg. At 3-2 Wade, Super Ted landed the 89 checkout to keep things on throw. Great shot. Then, wow, very next leg. He produced a ton plus. The 105 on double 16. He liked it too. That was a break. But ouch, Wade struck back immediately on double four, and that was the difference because he won the next two as well, closing it out with three on the spin. Six for your final. Evitz was right there, but the machine revs on. Gabrielle Clemens dominating Mark Magini, the German giant racing out to a 3 0 lead. The Gladiator did get on the board in the fourth leg. He was 4 1 down before rattling off three straight to level. What a turnaround. Had four 180s in the span of four legs to get right back in it. It was just too little too late because Gaga closed it out from there for the 6-4 result. He staves off Magini's fight back. Kim Hybrex was hoping a hurricane would roll through Minehead. He brought some thunder here. He'd need them all against Mincer Sulovich. He was looking good, though. This double 18 made it 5-3 to the Belgian. Now, full disclosure, I was watching board two. I'll tell you why in a second. But when I came back to this one, Menser had hit the winning double and was shaking hands. Three in a row for the comeback. Well done. This is what I had my eye on. Adrian Lewis signing autographs during his walk-on. Then it was to the playing area for a date with the biggest biceps and darts. Josh Payne. Jackpot struggling early on. Payne was not. Tossed in this maximum on his way to a 4-1 stranglehold. Gave it some too. He was animated and confident. Seemed to wake up the giant though because look at this. 80 with a 180 of his own. The celebration, that was just the start. Then seventh leg, these two treble 19s. The tail end of a 174 which followed a 180. Lewis was on the nine. He wouldn't get it but he would make it 4-3. And then when he leveled at four, he charged all the way across the playing area the tension mounting. A great atmosphere building over on stage two, tweeted the Darty Party podcast. Both players giving it some and high quality darts. Lewis made it four on the spin for his first lead of the match at 5-4 and incredibly, he'd complete the comeback five straight. The handshake was frosty and then it got ugly. The two almost coming to blows. Officials had to get involved. Tempers flaring big time. Wowzers. Massive win, that jackpot said. On the altercation at the end, he added, he said a few things. I don't really want to go into it. Lewis maybe went overboard with the celebrations, noted the Irish darts fan, but so did Payne, so he had no right to go at him after the match. I was no more than five meters from the action, replied Theodore Bagwell. Lewis started screaming as he walked past Payne on the hockey after scoring 180s. He started it, no question. It's Jose Justicia, all over again, said Jay Mascus, and yes, it had shades of that, certainly. As you might imagine, social media went nuts. Darts fans everywhere weighing in with their thoughts. It was heated. I love this from Hannah. As if Lewis was going to take on pain, she said with the muscle emojis. 2018 winner Daryl Gurney wasn't at his best, but he used arrows like this to get it to 5-3 on Luke Woodhouse, one away, but not so fast. Woodhouse stayed alive in the madhouse, a crucial third dart there, and then he followed with a third dart, double six for five all. His juices flowing, had the darts in the decider as well, and yes, he'd do it. Dethrones the defending champ 6-5, taking three on the trot. Some big emotion. Look at this. His TV debut successful. The shock of the tournament so far. As Susie Q points out here, great game to watch. And indeed it was. Can tell you that Willie O'Connor was excellent on the outer ring. And that's why he got past Steve West. 6-4 the final. A great result for the Magpie. We pick up the MVG Luke Humphreys match with a fist bump. Humphrey saying congrats. Nice shot before MVG carried on celebrating 
the big fish, a 170 checkout that made it 4-0 to the world number one. Humphreys did manage to put three on the board, but at the end of the day, it was no problem for the green machine, 6-3 the final. Jamie Hughes winning the battle with Jermaine Watamena, leading 5-3, the machine gun frustrated, there would be no comeback, and it's yes for Yaza, He's off to the second round. Peter Wright approaching the Aki on the jammy Dodger. He was in the zone too. Tops here on the 100 checkout for 2-0. The ladies love snake bite, don't they? It's a Friday night party. James Wilson did well to hang in there, but it was 3-2 Scotland at the interval. Wright averaging 109 at 4-2. He was still in charge at 5-3. Wilson broke back for 5-4 to leave Wright back. Backstage, biting his nails, he then took out a hundred cleanly, just the two darts needed for five all. We'd have a decider where Snakebite would miss two darts on 80 for the match, and the jammy Dodger would only need the one on tops. The emotion came out. Wow, he was pumped. If he was pumped, what was his manager, Matt Ward? You know what they say. Always leave your manager screaming for more. Great comeback for great scenes. How bad was it for Snakebite? One of his points came out during the later stages, and it seemed to put him off. Thank you, Charlie Gray, for that. Ron Muhlenkamp taking some warm-ups in preparation for his clash with Voltage. Well, he never did get warm. Rob Cross steamrolled in this one. 5-1 through six legs. 6-2 the end result. Cross advances comfortably. A view from the back of the house for our final fixture. Raymond Van Barneveld versus Nathan Aspinall. We got some glimpses of the old Barney, and the old Barney is legendary. Took out 41 here for 3-1, averaging 103. Then he fired in these two treble 20s. Then the treble 19, a 177 to leave double 12. Had three at it, but no, he missed. Could have been 4-1, but it was only 3-2 his lead at the commercials. But the five-time world champ knows what he's doing. Came back after the break, took the next two for 5-2. We got the double fist pump and then the applause from Aspinall. Shades of the old Barney indeed. He closed it out for the 6-2 win. Easy peasy. So there you have it. Day one done at the Players' Championship Finals. 32 matches in all over two sessions. Round two tomorrow. We thank DJ Gandolfini for the lineup. It will be action-packed as well. But what an opening act. Upsets and fisticuffs today on High Roller Radio.